Uh, for the next 30 minutes, we're going to be joined by Bev Harris, of course, her research. She's won many times in court proving election fraud in different parts of the country, California, Ohio, you name it. Uh, her book was turned into Hacking Democracy on HBO, and she described it last week with us as the most wall-to-wall -wall fraud she's ever seen, just just, just, just uh, announcing states when no votes of that day were counted, uh, announcing a bunch of states against Romney, and she's nonpartisan. I know in the past was more Democratic. Uh, facts are facts. Michael uh, Schneider has an article up at Infowars.com from the American Dream. Election fraud. Obama won more than 99% of the vote in more than 100 Ohio precincts. And the source is the Ohio Secretary of State. They have the links to it. And we have the uh, scans of it. And uh, in some of these precincts, you had thousands voting. Uh, a lot of them had like 388, 597. You know, those are the types of numbers uh, that we're seeing here, uh, 733. And, and, and in precincts with 781, you'd have four people vote for Romney. <laughs> I mean, it is, who, who believes out of 514 votes, you'd get one for Romney? I mean, you can go look at the numbers here, and you can go to the uh, different counties where they're posting these. <laughs> again, again. When, when, when Bain Capital gave, last time I checked, close to double the money to Obama that they gave to Mitt Romney when, when, when he ran Bain and still has a big blind trust with it, the fix is in. It's not that I'm saying Romney was good either. And, and these Obama supporters, we've got Eric, Rich, Marcus, and others. I will get to you, and then I'll get into the Petraeus news after Bev leaves us. She's been very nice to give us all these updates, uh, but now she's learned uh, a lot more. This is the type of stuff she's talking about. Sure, she's caught Diebold in their code designed for fraud. Sure, it's come out in you know congressional hearings. But now it's just, we'll just announce all these states. We'll announce Prop 37 when half the votes aren't counted. They still haven't counted 3 million of them. Uh, we'll just say whatever we want. I mean, it's reached a new cuckoo land. And just like when Ron Paul got publicly robbed in Iowa uh, and Maine by the Republicans, he wouldn't buck it because you look like a sore, sore loser. And even though all this election fraud news is out and confirmed, you'd think it'd be big news that in Ohio, uh, you'd have things going on like what we just mentioned. 99% of the vote plus, we're talking about 95, 98% in some of these areas going to Obama. Does anyone, does anyone believe that? I mean, this is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. Uh, and uh, Bev Harris joins us on this and a cornucopia of other issues, blackboxvoting.org. Bev, thank you for giving us an update. I know you'll know more in a couple more days, but as you said last week, if anybody even cares, yes, I care about the integrity of our election system. Thank God you and many others do. Tell, uh, Bev, tell us, tell us what you've uh, discovered right now. Well, you know, I've been compiling information, and I have a long ways still to go. I hate to say that, but, you know, it's, it really has been flooding in. Um, one of the things that I have spotted is a real trend with the absentee votes. You know, I've been saying for a long time now, these absentee votes, watch out for them because you can't control the chain of custody. And this is specifically what I've been seeing. The count gets interrupted right in the middle. For example, in King County, Washington, which has 1.2 million voters, 75% of the votes are counted, and then all of a sudden they interrupt the count. And they claim all of the optical scan machines have stopped functioning at once. And then when they resume the count, you know, you often see a trend reversal. Well, I saw this in state after state after state, in location after location, where they were having Mysteriously, all of the absentee counting voting machines, they're count absentees are counted on voting machines, um, but all the machines would go on the fritz at once. Do you believe that? I don't. And then it would put a halt in the count. So I want people to understand what can happen when they stop the absentee counting midstream. Each of these voting machine systems has what's called a manual override system where you click the screen in a secret location, usually right-click it in a certain place, and up pops a screen that says manual entry, and you can simply type different votes over what's in there. That sounds like a great design for Al Capone or uh, Don Corleone or uh, uh, let me think of some other big uh, famous uh, criminals, uh, Bonnie and Clyde maybe. I mean, this sounds really reasonable. Well, you know, 
I mean, they claim, they claim, because I have videotaped uh, election officials using this uh, manual entry system, by the way, um, the manual override. They claim that they use it for things like, well, in Kentucky one time, I saw them use it when they said, you know, we lost a voting machine. So here, um, we have the results tape. We're going to manually enter the results. Of course, you can't see what they're doing, so who knows what they're manually entering. Um, but, you know, the, it's a very, very dangerous thing. This is not a hack. This is actually, it's a secret menu. And if it was really legitimate, I don't know why they wouldn't just put it in some place where you could see it plainly in the menu. But you have to know how to get at it. In the Diebold system, you right-click in a certain place, and it pops up a screen, and you literally type in any votes you want. And, and you were the one years ago that discovered the code with Diebold, and they had to change it, uh, their little back door designed to go in, change it, and then cover your tracks. Right. Well, guess what? They, they, and they never solved that problem. It's still right in there. Um, so, you know, there's some things people can do. And I, I had a reporter call me the other day, and he says, well, are you asking for the records in King County? And, you know, I'm not. Because if I do every single step of it for everyone, here's what happens. Everybody looks to me and says, I want you to protect the election in 10,000 jurisdictions. What, that's not going to work. What we have to do is get people to take some action. Yeah, folks, you've got to go out and challenge it. I hear all the time, I'm mad at you. You need to make a film uh, on this subject. You need to go out and do this or do that. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I mean, I'm working 18 hours a day some days. Right. Give right. me a break, folks. Right. So here's what I did. I told this reporter, I'll tell you what, I will send you a template of exactly what to ask for, and I will help you analyze it. But I'm not going to do every step of it because the reporters and the public need to learn how to exercise their muscles. Uh, if they don't, then the whole idea of a democratic republic is a sham. And we know that's not the case. It's just that we've been so taught to accept things and that we're safe and we're protected. And, you know, that's the kind of logic that was used long ago to in, to keep people in slavery, to keep women subjugated, was just to say, don't worry your head about it. We'll all take care of it. Now, you know, we need to flex these muscles. And so I, I'm glad to help people. Um, know what records to get. But I'm telling you, this absentee voting, understand that 25 states this time had no fault absentee, sometimes automatic absentee, where they were sending ballots out to people who had not voted in years and who did not request a ballot. Wide open for fraud. And then when these things come in, they're counting them, and they know they take days and days, sometimes weeks to count them. So they know exactly sure. what they need to flip that election. Let's talk about Prop 30. Stop the count and manual enter it. Sure. Let me, let's talk briefly about Prop 37. You know, a lot of polls showed two to one wanting to label. I don't believe that Californians for a minute, as we said last week, uh, voted to not label things. Obvious right. fraud going on. We've seen right. election officials all over the country getting caught the last year going to jail for fraud. I mean, how do we investigate that? You know, and, and I've been thinking about this, too, because 99% uh, of the time, even if the citizens catch them red-handed, um, the attorney general or the local attorney will refuse to investigate or refuse to prosecute. And I've been thinking about that, too. We still need to catch them. We still need to get the records. And then we need to do things like convene citizen grand juries and so forth, because Again, we don't want to just be saying, oh, yes, you know, to the authority figure, you're, you're in power, you're protecting us. If they're not protecting us, then we need to actually use the remedies that are available to us in the Constitution to protect ourselves. Well said. Um, what do you make of the numbers we're getting out of Ohio uh, and other areas uh, where 99% of votes in dozens and dozens of precincts uh, were for Barack Obama. Well, it depends on the demographics of the precincts. Now, I have seen, um, for example, in Memphis, they have certain precincts where 99% um, of the people who live there are black, and if they have a, a black Democrat running against a white Republican from the suburbs, you will actually see 99% of the votes go for the black Democratic candidate. Um, but that's pretty rare, and actually, even in an almost all African American precinct, typically it's about 96 percent, 92 percent. If it's a very clear 
demographic trend. So it could happen, but you'd really have to compare what those numbers are, which actually are available now. I'm not sure in Ohio. I don't think they lo label it by race. In most of the southern states, they actually do identify the, the voters, whether what race they are. Man, I'm really getting sick of all this race stuff. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the cover of Newsweek saying, if you're white, you're history. Uh, then, of course, that's meant to create racial division uh, by the uh, controlled left. It's all divide and conquer, but it's really getting unbelievable. We have been robbed. Globalism has been a curse to this country. Everything the globalists are doing worldwide is about making you dependent. I'm getting storable food. You need it because it's the only insurance that you can 100% use. I have, you know, family that are veterans and people like that uh, who can't live off their Social Security, who are disabled and things. And that's why I've bought so much food. Charity starts at home. I promote what I believe in 100%. And I believe in what they're doing 100%. And the globalists do not want you to be self-sufficient. I hope you will take action. Get the six free meals when you pay for the shipping so that you can eat them and see that it's quality. That's why I chose eFoods, is I did my research, I tested a bunch, bought a bunch. The other stuff was like cardboard or filled with MSG or made in China. So bottom line, folks, eFoodsDirect.com forward slash Alex. Follow the banners at InfoWars.com or call the toll-free number 800-409-5633. That's 800-409-5633. Uh, Bev, other points in this short five, six minute segment that people should know. Uh, you mentioned last, I guess, Thursday on the show with us that it was amazing to see all these states being called before the day's votes had even been partially counted. Uh, just a new level where, uh, I guess, in response to people exposing fraud, the system saying, well, you think that's bad? You ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah, that's actually, I think, the story of this election is the premature. It, it's like... The, 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 the elite media believes, I think, that if they make it a definitive win and they call it really, really early, even before the votes are counted, it will uh, prevent people from being motivated to look at what happened. And, you know, I'm really encouraged, though, because I'm still getting call after call. You know, like every half hour I'm getting a call to do another radio show and to... to go over this and it's not it's not just from one side or the other i think the public is starting to really sense that this is there's something that stinks about this i mean why won't they count our votes and and tell us the real numbers and wait till all the votes are counted or at least most of them you know why this sudden rush to make us believe a result so that we won't question it yeah, that's it. It's just, hey, we'll just announce it, you know, in the morning. And then Romney goes along with it, so it cements the idea. And Ron Paul, God bless his soul, you know, he'll look like a sore loser when he got cheated, clearly in Iowa and Maine. Uh, even the news later had to admit, well, he really won, but the Republicans won't count the precincts where he won. They just do whatever they want. Right. And, you know, one thing I saw also this time is you started to see this drumbeat very early on before the poll, any of the polls had closed, so they knew they couldn't call anything yet. And here they're all, all the networks are saying, and it's very important for stability for the candidate to concede, you know, and they were pushing this idea that this is patriotic and this is what needs to be done is the candidate needs to concede promptly, you know, so it's just really creepy. It's like, okay, everybody, you need to concede promptly. Okay, here's the win. Okay, everybody shut up and go home. And that's what they do in countries like Soviet Russia uh, back in the 70s and 80s. It was the same type of right. same right. type of thing. And, and, and now, beforehand, they said, even though the polls showed neck and neck, oh, no, Obama is going to win by a landslide. That's self-fulfilling prophecy. And to be clear, Bev, I'm not here, you know, saying this because I was a Romney supporter. You're not here saying that. That's where the facts lead you. But I'm getting contacts from Democrats who are just really feeling good right now, like their football team won uh, or their boxer won, and they're like, "Aha, you're just mad your guy lost." And they don't understand that I really hated Al Gore. I didn't know what we were getting with George Bush. He got he was pretty bad too. But I mean, there was still evidence of fraud against Gore there. 
uh, I just reported where the facts led us. You were on at the time. Uh, now it just it doesn't matter. Whatever side thinks they won, they don't care. Uh, too much of that, although you know what's really interesting is you we are seeing it continue. And, I, I, you know, we are seeing people keep caring. It's so interesting. Like, you know, Brad Friedman is pretty much on the left, you know, and I'm sure, you know, I don't know if he's an Obama supporter, but he's he's definitely on that side. But, you know, on the Brad blog, he kept it going and kept investigating and kept investigating. And I think that's what we need to see and we will see because the public understands when – someone's you know pulling the wool over their eyes and yeah no he's a huge obama supporter at least in the past we've had him on and and it's, it, it, i mean it's just so sad you can debate the rhetoric all day of these two clowns yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but they work for the it. same people i mean come on but you know but the thing was i guess my point is he continued to cover it even after obama won in 2008 and we are seeing more and more of this where I, and i think that's what it's really going to take is for people to to set aside their political rhetoric on this issue and realize that all political power stems from the ballot box. And if we, you know, if you want political power for your side, you got to have an honest ballot box that you can authenticate. Well said, uh, Bev Harris. Uh, uh, when's a good time to talk to you? Maybe in a week or two after it's all kind of uh, shook um, out? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I, I was shocked at the volume that I have. I, at this point, I have probably 10,000 more reports to go through. Now, a lot of those are duplicates, and a lot of them are, you know, just somebody repeating something. But there's a lot of good stuff in there. And uh, so it does just take time to sift through these. And all right, well, we'll revisit this soon. Thank you so much, Bev Harris. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also 